Welcome to Electron Line. Our next video covers the concept of equivalent fractions. We have a couple of rules we should first visit. The first rule is that if we multiply the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same, it must be a non-zero number, it doesn't change the value of the fraction. Second rule, dividing the numerator and denominator of a fraction by the same non-zero number also doesn't change the value of the fraction. So when they ask you to write one fraction in a different way, for example, with a different denominator, you want the ratio of the numerator to the denominator not to change. We can accomplish that by multiplying or dividing the numerator and the denominator by the same number. In this case, they want us to write each fraction with a denominator of 24. I look at this and I say to myself, how many times does 4 fit into 24? And you realize then 4 fits into 24 six times. So if you multiply the denominator by 6, 4 times 6 gives you 24. But of course, according to the rule, we must multiply the numerator by the same number as well. If we then multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 6, the denominator will be 24. The numerator in this case will be 18, which means that 18 divided by 24 is an equivalent fraction to 3 divided by 4. Same with 5 divided by 6. I can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 4 because 4 times 6 is 24. Of course, I must multiply the numerator by the same number as well, but this then becomes equal to 20 divided by 24, which means 20 divided by 24 is an equivalent fraction to 5 divided by 6. Same with the number 1 half, or the fraction 1 half. If I multiply this by 12 divided by 12, notice 2 times 12 gives me 24, which means I end up with the equivalent fraction of 12 divided by 24, which means the same as 1 divided by 2. 1 divided by 8 can be multiplied with 3 divided by 3. Again, if I multiply the numerator and the denominator by the same number, I did not change the fraction, but this will now put it into a different format of 3 divided by 24, which is the equivalent fraction of 1 divided by 8. And finally, looking at 7 over 12, if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2, I can see that 2 times 12 is 24. This becomes 14 divided by 24, which is an equivalent fraction to 7 divided by 12. In a different example here, we can write each fraction with a denominator of 60. Again, I ask myself the question, how many times does 5 go into 60? The answer is 12. Therefore, if I multiply the denominator by 12, I get 60. And of course, I must multiply the numerator by the same number as well. I multiply this times 12 divided by 12, and I get the following fraction. 3 times 12 is 36. 5 times 12 is 60. 36 divided by 60 is the equivalent fraction to 3 divided by 5. 12 goes into 60 five times. That means I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 5. In that way, I get a denominator equal to 60, which is what I'm trying to do. But then I get a numerator of 25. But 25 divided by 60 is equivalent to 5 divided by 12. 11 divided by 30, or 11 thirtieths. I multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2. And that gives me the fraction 22 divided by 60. 22 divided by 60 is equivalent to 11 divided by 30. And finally, if I multiply both the numerator and the denominator of this fraction by 6, notice the denominator will become 60. The numerator is 54. 54 divided by 60 is equivalent to 9 divided by 10. It was brought to my attention that I did not do any cases where I had to divide both the numerator and the denominator by the same number, so we might as well throw a few examples in of that as well. Again, I have three fractions here. I want to write them with a denominator equal to 60. In this case, I need to reverse the process. How many times does 60 fit into 120? The answer is two times, which means if I divide the numerator by two, and I divide the denominator by 2, I get the following fraction. 54 divided by 2 gives me 27, and 120 divided by 2, whoop, and that should be a dot, not a 2, divided by 2 gives me 60, which means this is the equivalent fraction to 54 divided by 120. Here I notice that if I divide the numerator and the denominator by 3, so divide this by 3, and divide this by 3, 
Then what I get is 27 divided by 3 is 9, and 180 divided by 3 is 60. So 9 divided by 60 is equivalent to 27 divided by 180. And finally, here if I divide both the numerator and the denominator by 9, again I have to do exact same thing to the numerator and the denominator, I will end up with a new fraction. This will be 9 divided by 9 goes into 54, that would be 60. 9 divided by 60. All of these fractions are equivalent fractions. This is equivalent to that, this is equivalent to that, and this is equivalent to that. So I created new fractions that are equivalent with the denominator of 60 as I, as I was directed to do. And that's how that is done.